there yarn lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from my happy place, the Yarn Corner here on Vancouver Island in Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Saturday, June the 3rd, 2023, and this is video number 188. How are we all doing? I hope you're well and staying safe. Before I kick off, I want to wish everyone a happy Pride summer. Sometimes people celebrate them in North America in June and it runs all the way to August. So uh, if you are celebrating this month or throughout summer, I want to wish everyone a happy Pride. And if you're new to the channel, I want to welcome you as well as let you know what this is all about. I've set this channel up to talk about all of my Yarny adventures. That's in knitting, crocheting. I do dabble in a little bit of hand dyeing as well. Nothing on a huge scale. And yeah, I talk about my acquisitions, where I buy product from, and how much it costs, and review the yarn and tools of my trade. So if that is of interest to you, please stick around. If you're returning, I want to say welcome back. I really appreciated all the comments in my last video, which was talking about my yarn dyeing. Early in April, I jumped into the garage and I dyed up maybe two dozen uh, hanks of yarn. And I was experimenting with colours. And I was stuck on a few of the names, uh, what to call them. I had some that I was kind of, you know, swaying either way on. And you all helped me with that. So I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for the comments. And I'll talk to you just quickly about what I had come up with and what were the choices of the most popular votes on the names that I had uh, come up with, what you selected. Now, if you're interested in going back and having a look at the full video where you can have a look at all the yarn, because this is only a select few of the yarn that I had issues with trying to, to think up of a name. And uh, so I'll link that down below so you can go across and take a look. So the first one was this purpley magenta color. I was thinking of either calling it uh, magenta, majestic magenta, or the Cranberry Dahlia. And Cranberry Dahlia was the popular vote. So that's what I'm going to call this colorway. So thank you so much. This is the Cranberry Dahlia. The next one that I had an issue with, with uh, not knowing which way to go, I know that this was a very delicious dessert in my mind, looking at the colors that I was call it, going to call it either Rocky Road or Chocolate Cobble. And Chocolate Cobbles was the popular pick. So that's what these ones are going to be called, Chocolate Cobbles. The last one in the series of the questionable what name should I call it, I did not have a name for. But I did want to say that this one had a lot of comments and was a favorite of many. It is kind of a bluish gray and it does have purple tints in there as well. And yeah, so the color name of this one that I'm coming up with is Steel and Storm. For two reasons, most of the comments were saying that it reminded people of uh, weather conditions, like whether it was going to be storm or clouds or um, maybe sunset after the storm. So it had something to do with the uh, weather conditions, as well as whether it was a metal element, like a pewter, steel, or a, I even had titanium or platinum. So yeah, I really liked all the suggestions and I've got some mentionable ones here, which I, I want to give some shout out to because I thought they were very interesting. Uh, there was a commenter who said this reminded them of Dorian Gray. Uh, if you know the story about the person that has the painting up in the attic that uh, doesn't age, but the painting ages, I thought that was a clever, uh, a clever name to give this color. And the other one here was a morning without coffee. Well, <laughs> I think that person definitely needs their coffee to start their day. Uh, so really enjoyed all of the answers to uh, the question, uh, to the names that came up in that last video. 
Now, moving on, I'm going to now show you some work that is in progress. I've made some small milestones. There's not a huge amount of things to show that are in the way of finished items. So I'm going to show you what I've done. And this will involve some review on some yarn as well. Uh, the project that I'm talking about is the Nature's Walk, which is a crochet blanket. And it uses square motifs. And I've been looking at exploring economic DK acrylic or cotton acrylic based yarns and getting a good sense of what's out there on the market. Let's start by talking about what Hank's wearing. Hank's my man form. He's wearing a free form sweater vest that I am almost completed doing and I started this around maybe two weeks ago. It is my entry into a contest uh, where I'm using one of Crystal over at Bag of Days stitch tutorials and she's come up with this great idea that uh, she's encouraging all the yarn community that she has uh, to get involved with I guess celebrating crochet and the stitch tutorials that she has taught her community and I've learned this stitch in the body here called the tulip stitch I think she released this video uh, on the Tulip Stitch probably around a month or two ago. And I love the texture so much that I jumped at the chance of doing this. Now I'm going to be entering this. Hopefully I'll get it done in time. June the 15th, 2023 is the last final day that entries can be submitted. I'm going to be entering it, but I'm not um, kind of like letting Crystal know that I, I don't need to be uh, put into the draw of the contest, but um, I'm super excited to see what everyone else has come up with and all of their garments that they've created. Now, if you're looking for the instructions on if you want to enter this and learn a little bit more about the, uh, I guess, the rules of the contest, I'm going to leave Crystal's uh, link down below to the video where she talks about this wonderful stitch uh, stitch tutorial into a wearable uh, contest and yeah so if you are inclined to join uh, I can't wait to see what you make so yeah getting back to this garment here I have to still do the seam here up on the side and I have finished the paneling here just in a, a different stitch that regularly you would see in a sweater vest maybe some ribbing banding here on on the uh, base the waistband and i will also be doing some ribbing here around finishing the sleeves uh i'm not sure what i'm going to do with the neck yet whether i'll do crew neck ribbing or if i want to open a collar sort of like a uh, maybe a polo type collar i'm not sure it also uses other stitches up here it's called the seed stitch and I'm really enjoying it. I haven't made a wearable in crochet like a sweater vest before, so this is all new to me and I'm enjoying it. I have watched other tutorials that Crystal has made on previous sweater vests just to get an idea of construction. And I will turn Hank around so you can see the back. So it's the same kind of deal with the back here. This uh, fabric that the yarn that I'm using is making is quite a stretchy fabric and the stitch also is quite a flexible and stretchy fabric as well very form fitting <laughs> the measurement that i did when i was doing the banding here down at the bottom uh is a little looser so when i was measuring my weight or my sorry sorry my circumference of my body i was finding that this had some positive ease around and then when I moved into the tulip stitch, it did, it did sort of like compress inwards because the stitch was a little tighter. So, um, yeah, I think it might be a little too small for me, but I think Chad will be able to fit into this. So yeah, let's take a look at what I'm using in the yarn and what I use for my hooks. The yarn is... Lion Brands Respun 100% Recycled Polyester and it comes in this bonus bundle. I thought this was a great 
economic yarn, no affiliation with Lion Brown whatsoever, but I do love this yarn. It's in the colorway called Corn Silk, and it is a brown camel and beigey type heathered variety of yarn. It has a bit of a halo to it. It's nice to work with. Uh, I would say generally it doesn't split, not too often, and it does have spring to it. So I think if you're thinking of doing a, uh, like a, a stitch and choosing a hook with it, you might need to go up a size in a hook because with that extra spring in and stretchiness in the yarn, sometimes the stitches can kind of get a bit tight, tighter than what you would expect. And the hooks that I used, this one here, it's a J hook. And it was a beautiful hook that was gifted to me by Crystal over Bag A Day. And maybe I can get it out for you to see, so you can see what it looks like. It's a delightful. I had a little bit of a learning curve to use this hook because I'm used to Susan Bates hooks like this. Oops, there goes the lid. And as you can see, it's a slightly easier or streamline or slim line handle, whereas this one has bumpy bits to it. But I took my time and I really enjoyed using the hook. This is a hook from Nelson Wood. And uh, I will link his website down below as well. I also switched up from the J hook and I'm using this one for the body, the, the tulip stitch. And this is the, what is this one? A five millimeter. So it went down a little bit in size. Perhaps if I stayed with a, uh, the J hook, it might've not condensed uh, and, and had that kind of um, uh, bowing inwards or, you know, I'm, I was losing a little bit of that positive ease with a smaller hook, but I did like the fabric and the stitch. So, yeah, I don't mind it. I think it's going to work out fine. Now, the next thing that I'm going to talk about is a project that is one that I'm really enjoying doing because it's investigating other DK yarns. I was on this kick for hunting economic DK yarns in acrylic and then also in cotton acrylic, so uh, acrylic bl blends. And I have really enjoyed this process. The pattern that I'm working on is called Nature's Walk and it's by Sandra Paul. It is a free pattern and it uses six tiles. There is a seventh one in there called Hearths uh, that is written up for you to uh, create this swatch and gauge, but uh, there are the, the six key tiles that you use in this blanket, and I'm really enjoying it. I've done all six of the, the tiles in the correct number that they need. I did more actually in these economic yarns. Then I found out through my commenters that there were more tiles that you could purchase from Sandra. And the, this is the Nature's Walk bonus squares. And I jumped at the chance because I was addicted to these squares. I wanted to get the extra six squares here. And this one is a paid for pattern. They are offered in both UK crochet terms as well as US crochet terms. I... I'm more familiar with the US crochet terms, but uh, mistakenly I printed out the version of the UK terms. Now there are around 28 pages in both patterns showing you uh, charts as well as written form, as well as photographs of what the tiles look like, and just little tips about finishing certain stitches that may be done in different ways. Generally speaking, when you kind of like get to a stitch that they feel that there are other possibilities of completing that stitch, they'll direct you to how the stitch is done in this particular pattern, which is very helpful. Uh, yeah, so I'll link 
these patterns down below as well. And just so that you know, one of them is free and the other one is a paid for pattern. What might be a good thing for me to do right now, because there are many tiles here that I've got in front, is to talk to you about what my ideas were with uh, extending and adding in the, the new uh, tiles and uh, making a larger blanket than what the pattern suggests. And I have some yarn that I haven't featured before that I found in my stash and they will fit nicely into the the series of hunting for the economic DK yarn in acrylic and acrylic base. And I think that that will work really nicely. So I'll concentrate on the ones that I haven't showcased before, and then I'll quickly touch on the ones that you've seen so that uh, you can get a whole kind of concise um, balance of what's happening with the, with the blankets so far. And I know that a couple of you are doing the blanket with me. Kevin comes to mind. Hi, Kevin. The first yarn that I'm going to talk about that I pulled from Stash, going along the theme of the economic DK acrylic blend or acrylic based yarns, is the Stylecraft Batik. I purchased this three years ago around then when I was first shopping online and learning about yarn. And I purchased it from a place called lovecrafts.com online store. Since uh, I've been exploring other options and found other places where I can find yarn, I haven't shopped very often at Lovecraft. I think uh, when they offer a good sale, I might tend to look at them, but generally as a rule of thumb, I do find the product that they have elsewhere for a better, better price, better value. Um, so yeah, these are 50 gram balls and I've tried two of them in the nature's walk tiles or squares and just to get a sense of how it would work up, what type of, um, fabric it would make. Now these batik style crafts are a blend of a premium acrylic, 80% and 20% wool. So this is how it worked up in the colorway pistachio and I'm using the square called leaf. I'm not putting these in the blanket and I'll tell you why. I'm finding that these worked up larger than the other leaf patterns that I use with other economic yarns and I think that spring factor that is that you're seeing here maybe a result of perhaps maybe the the uh, the the stitch work uh being a little looser i'm not too sure <laughs> maybe my tension needed to change because of that extra elasticity and i want my blanket to be unified in a grid form i don't want larger um uh, squares buckling out uh just so that they can fit into that grid form and i think that uh, these will need to be either unraveled or I could use them for something else like a pillowcase, something smaller. But yeah, I enjoyed working with it. It didn't split. It's quite an economic yarn. I think you can get these 50 gram balls for around $3 a piece. And it's not as affordable as some of the other DK yarns. It uh, sits somewhere in the middle range. But uh, yeah, so I'll tell you how many I got from 50 grams in the leaf pattern. I got three of them and ha had a little bit left over as well. Now, these squares that are in the Nature's Walk, they're all different. They take all different uh, measurements or lengths of yarn. And I'm finding that a lot of the times the ones that are fillet, like this one here, they tend to uh, give, uh, you know, your yarn can uh, stretch a little further and you can get more squares done. But there are a couple in the patterns, such as the bud square or the wheat square. And those ones have popcorn stitch and they eat a little bit more. So maybe that's why the pattern calls for more yarn so that you can choose to use either or colors 
port uh, any uh, any of the colors that you pick into two of those uh, two of those squares in particular so that you have enough yarn for them. So I think uh, that's the reason why you probably have a lot left over when you are reading the pattern that you're they're covering themselves for the more intensely uh, yarn eating squares so you can choose whatever color. So yeah, that's the colorway called pistachio using the leaf pattern. And this is the coral colorway. And it's, I'm using it in the square called flower. It's really pretty. So I got three of those in the 50, 50 grams of the coral colorway. And that's what the back looks like for the coral. Definitely a front facing square that, uh, you know, you get to see the beautiful stitch work face on, and then you can see the difference when you turn it over. These squares are done uh, all the way in the same, the same facing way. So there is a right side and a wrong side. It's uh, these squares uh, so far that I've done are not, you don't turn and reverse, you don't turn your work. So you just keep going round and round and round. Uh, yeah. So that one is the B Stylecraft Batik. The second one from Stash that I pulled out, I, I believe I did order this from Wool Warehouse or maybe it was Hirschner's. I can't quite remember because it was deep stash diving. And this is another economic yarn. It's a hundred gram ball and it's from King Cole. It's called Subtle Drifter. It's a double knit, which is a three weight yarn. And the colorway that you're seeing here is called Mist. This one is going into my blanket and I'm using a square pattern called Snowflake. And this one is in the bonus bundle. I found that I also had to uh, change my tension up with this one as well, because it has that slight spring to it. And this one I believe is 100% acrylic. Let's take a look. Mm -mm -mm. This, no, this one is 25% cotton, 6% wool, and 69% premium acrylic. So yeah, I tightened it up a little bit, my, my tension, so that I could get the square the same size as the other acrylic-based yarns. And it worked out nice. It doesn't have as much stretch, so it has a bit of a more structural uh, rigidity to the fabric than the Stylecraft Batik. So out of my 100 gram ball in the King Cole Drifter, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got eight of them and because I'm talking about that tile, I also did one extra because I'm doing nine of each of these uh, tiles that are going into the blanket. And I'm going to be laying up my blanket as eight across and 10 down because nine tiles by nine pieces in the design, I will get 81 as my number, I'm going to be taking one tile out so that I can complete a larger blanket than the uh, Nature Walks pattern. I believe they have uh, six across and then they have eight down. So mine's slightly going to be larger. So the one that I finished in this, uh, going back to this one, is from a Hobby Yarn and it is called the woody tweed and this color here in the woody tweed is called white i believe the color name num might be a number 
and the number is one. Now, this is also a DK weight yarn and it is 100% recycled wool. I really like this yarn a lot and it gives a nice color, speckles for the, uh, as the name suggests, it's the tweed. And that will be going into the blanket as well. Each of the tiles, apart from one of the tiles, so that will be the eight, eight, the, the one that's taken out so they have 80 squares, will have one of these in this yarn so that I can speckle it through the design in that particular tweed yarn. Uh, so, what else can I tell you about the yarn of the Drifty yarn? It was very affordable. I believe I paid for that 100 grams, roughly around in Canadian currency, between four and six dollars. And I thought that was a good value to get all of those all of those tiles done with one ball. Uh, so let's go over ones that you have seen before, but you haven't seen me complete the full ball and I'll just grab them from over here. Okay, so I've got a few more here and this one here, Willow Rise, is another DK Way yarn and it is a acrylic blend. And what do we have? I believe this one's cotton acrylic. 50, uh, sorry, 58% cotton and 42% acrylic. The name of the color that you'll see is called Rouge. If you need the color number, it is 0112. And these balls are 150 grams. So you're getting a lot more yard yardage than the 100 gram balls and they weigh a little... Uh, well, the ball itself is a bit bigger. So this is the square here. It's called Berries. And this one is in the free pattern, Nature's Walk. This one will be going into the blanket. I just love this yarn. This one, this yarn is probably my favorite yarn, most favorite that I've used out of the series that I'm going to be showcasing. And didn't split on me. I think it holds really well form and it's nice and drapey. So at variations, the variation in color in Rouge and with all of the Rise collection, they slowly drift from a deep to a faded. And I really like that. So you can see it in the squares. So I've got one, two, three, four. You can see it's getting darker. Now, all of these will not be going in the in the blanket. I only need nine of them. But I thought I'd just do the full ball anyway because I didn't want any left over. And whatever I have left I might over, I might be able to make into a smaller item, maybe a pillowcase that goes with this uh, bedspread or a quilt. The next one you haven't seen is this tile, which I just completed today. And I used the James Seabrett Top Value DK Weight Yarn. I got this from, uh, where did I get this from? Wool Warehouse, which is a online store situated over in the UK. And I do a full reveal of that unboxing. I'll include it down below where I talk about this brand of yarn and collection. And this one is in the colorway mauve. Really great value. Uh, these balls were, I think, two, they translated over from uh, maybe to US currency, $2.17, which I think is uh, just under $3 for Canadian or thereabouts, give or take. So this is the colorway mauve. And the, the square that I'm crocheting up here, it's called Sunshine. <laughs> so I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. From a hundred gram ball, 
and I had a little leftover that I thought that I would play chicken and do my ninth one. Unfortunately, I didn't win. I was uh, minus one and a half rows. <laughs> so, <laughs> unfortunately. But as I said, I was going to do one tile in the Woody Tweed from Hobby Yarn. And that will be my ninth one. Now, quickly going over the other ones that you've seen before, and I won't talk about them too much, but this one here is called the James C. Brett Top Value Double Knitting in the colorway Light Lavender. And this is called Star. This is also in the free Nature Walk pattern. And from the 100 gram ball, I got one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight. And my ninth one is in the Hobby Woody Tweed. Same brand of yarn in the colorways Salmon. And I am choosing this to be my flower in the free pattern of Nature's Walk. So I got one, two, three, four, five, Seven, eight, and nine. Now, the ninth one, I almost, uh, I did run out actually in my ninth one. So what I did is I pulled back and I used some of that coral from uh, the, the, what was it called? Star, Starcraft Batik. And I added it in just around in uh, two of the rows so that I could complete the ninth one using the same color. So this one doesn't have the extra hobby woody tweed. And the next one I have is another yarn that I purchased from Wool Warehouse in the same video where I'm talking and comparing when I'm unboxing is this one here. It's called Yarnsmith Create. Very comparable to James Seabrett. I would say that they had similar colorways almost to the point where they were identical and after using both of the yarns I do believe that they are almost the same if not they are identical yarns and I did the colorway was called parchment and I did the gate which is the square in the free nature's walk so I got one two three four five six seven eight I got my nine in this one as well. I don't believe I did a, a hobby woody tweed in this one either. So I had enough to get through one full 100 gram ball. And yeah, so that one was the yarn, yarn smith. The next one is also James C. Brett double knitting in the colorway lime. And this one is the leaf motif in the free nature's walk pattern and i got one two three four five six seven eight nine nine in that one and i believe there is there is one of these in the uh woody tweed but i don't know where it is where it's gone somewhere around here so i got nine of those out of 100 gram ball Reaching over here. And this one here I also reviewed in my Hirschner's unboxing. I'll include the video down below if you want to see more of a concise overview. But this one is from Premier Basic DK Yarn. The colorway is called Coral. It's also 100 grams and 100% acrylic. The colour here is coral. The tile that I'm stitching to is called Buds. And I got one. Two, three, four, five. I got six in 100 grams. So that's where the difference is, I think, when you're um, doing these squares. Some of them you can get a lot more use out of the yard, uh, of the yarn and you can complete tiles, uh, more tiles out of a 100 gram uh, ball. 
and other tiles like this one here you'll have to supplement with maybe getting a second hank um, to cover the rest of the yarn so what I did was I thought well seeing I'm already doing some woody tweed in each of them I will just add to that six and I'll do another four so I've got ten of this variety of yarn together and that will go in my blanket as well so that catches you up with the blanket I hope that wasn't too long and tedious I also have all the colors in a snapshot so you can take a look to see uh, what it all comes together like and I'll include it here I'm really excited about how these projects are developing and with the sweater vest here I'll be focusing on that so that I can make that deadline of June 15th 2023. So I'm going to shift gears and if you're just here for the yarning goodies I want to wish you a good week and I'll see you in the next episode and now I'm going to be talking about what's updates what what's been going on here in our community me and my husband have moved into about a year and a half ago so biggest thing is we purchased a puppy so we have a puppy now a new addition to our family and there was an exciting story uh, backtracking we've been looking at wanting to get a dog for a year or two now and because we have moved into the new place and have got settled in we thought now might be a good time to do it it's summer months we've heard through the grapevine that getting a dog and training it is the most easiest when the weather is better so you can always go out and do potty training you're not stopped by snow or cold weather and it's just nicer to ha introduce a family pet into the household when there's people who have holidays or breaks so you've got time for the dog and so we we kind of queued it all up and have our puppy now so we've called her pixel that's her name and when we went to the breeders we were looking for a specific breed a Wheaton Terrier and the reason for that is that uh, Chad's family dog like the parents dog is a soft Wheaton Terrier and we just love her dearly and we thought we'd want to get one like that as well so this breeder that we found locally to us down in Nanaimo which is around a, a almost two hour drive getting down there was the closest one that we could find and they were breeding mixed Wheaton Terriers so 75% Wheaton Terrier 25% Poodle uh, they do also have 100% Wheaton Terriers but they weren't expected to come until later on in the year and uh, this litter that we were uh, going to visit to see whether we'd liked any of the, the pups uh, they had nine in the litter and we drove down there we were super excited to meet the nine little pups and we fell in love with all of them it was a really hard choice but what sealed the deal for us was that that our little pixel was a slightly standoffish to begin with she was cautiously curious and then later she developed a, like a bond and she wanted to explore whereas the other pups were like all over us and they were kind of they didn't have much control like bladder control so we kind of like uh yeah <laughs> we ended up being a little uh damp when we left there uh, but pixel when we got her on us she was wriggling to get out of our our arms and she wanted to make sure that she was you know going potty away from us so she'd already had some knowledge about like where to do her thing and where not to do it so we thought this one's got a lot of brains and she's going to run this household so anyway uh we chose pixel and uh she wasn't quite ready to come home we had to go back home wait another two weeks when she was going to get her first round shot so she'll be with her mum a bit longer and then we went to pick her up so the first car ride home with with little pixel was precious she fell asleep in our arms instantly and uh, we've been bonding and I believe it's 
imprinting, is that what it's called? She's imprinting right now and learning her name. We're doing everything that we've, uh, we've studied on uh, YouTube about like getting a new pet. So we we approach this with some angles. Now, we watch so many different points of views about training, potty training and doing this and that. So in the end, we, we, th we thought we had good background kind of foundation of what we were going to do. Some of it goes out the window, some of it we stick to. We find our kind of, I guess, our routine ourselves. Uh, a lot of shift work, waking up in the middle of the night, uh, doing uh, potty training, and then we're crate training as well, which is which is uh, something that she's taken to uh, easily, I would say, not too difficult. And a lot of uh, sitting around the crate while she settles down and getting used to the new space inside her crate, and she prefers now to sleep in her crate, which is amazing. Uh, we come home during the day as well, so we see a lot of puppy, and we make sure that she's learning to uh, go outside. There are a few accidents, but she's really headed that way outside uh, to do her her things that she needs to do. And we're um, looking forward to the day where she's old enough, she has all her vaccines or vaccinations, where we can go hiking with her and take her on trails and, you know, just explore things together as a unit. And, you know, she's a packed animal, pack animal. <laughs> and I think she's going to run the household. So if I have some footage, which I, I do have photographs, I'll include them at the end of the video. So you'll see what our new addition is. Uh, other than that, before we went to Nanaimo to pick up our puppy, we made sure that we got some time at the cabin because we knew that we would be home for a while until she got all of her vaccines. And uh, we had a, a weekend with Chad's parents where we played games and that was really nice to have some downtime with um, at the cabin and with Chad's parents before locking <laughs> down with a puppy in the house. That brings us to what I've been watching and what I can recommend on TV. Now I've got a couple of series and I've also got a thriller movie that I can suggest. These are all on Netflix or they are for us here in, up in Canada, but uh, you might have already seen them. I'd love to get your comments and what you thought when you, wa when you watch these. But the first one here is a documentary and it is based here in our own backyard of Vancouver Island and it looks at nature. It's called Island of the Sea Wolf. This is on the west coast of Vancouver Island, open to the rugged open ocean, looks at the ecosystem there on all the different animals. So there are a couple sea uh, investigations of sea animals and then there are eagles that they look into as well as the sea wolf. I really enjoyed this. It's narrated by a Canadian and it's Will Arnett and I think he did a wonderful job. He's not David Attenborough but he does give a, a good flavour of Canadian Canadianism and uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly. So it's six, five or six episodes and the cinematography is absolutely beautiful. So if you're interested in Vancouver Island or seeing the, the beauty of nature here, I would recommend watching that. The second one is the thriller. And this one is kind of a horror story, slightly science fiction, looking at uh, what advancements we've made in AI and how far it's going to go. So it looks towards the future, not too distant where a family ha has had a traumatic loss and they're looking to AI to band-aid like a therapy kind of session. So Megan is the movie and Megan is also the name of the AI robot that is introduced to this family and she's modelled after I think maybe a 13 to 14 year old and is is added to the family to become a support mechanism for the child 
of the same age in the family. So it's a daughter that has had this traumatic experience. And Megan is meant to be therapy for the human daughter. And it goes a little astray. And I think this is a uh, age old thing since AI has been around whether or not AI is the right pathway to take. The other mini series that I can recommend is called Dope Sick. Now this stars Michael Keaton. He does a, uh, an award-winning performance in my eyes. His, his role in the show is a doctor. So he prescribes these pharmaceuticals to his patients. Now this is based on a real historical event that happened I think it was like in the 90s, maybe 80s or 90s, the Sackler family, Sackler family, were a pharmaceutical tycoon family that uh, had, um, I guess, made their mark and continued to kind of like have strongholds on a lot of the pharmaceutical brands that were being presented. So they had uh, a drug called what is it called? Oxy, Oxycontin, I think it was called. And it was meant to relieve pain, but it was very addictive. So a lot of people were uh, needing to up their doses. Uh, they were getting addicted to the drug. There's a court case that uh, intermittently comes into the cut scenes because the story is told by looking back into the historical factors that happened during the course of this oxycotton drug. And uh, they always, you know, bounce back forward to the actual court case as well. So it's, it's wonderfully uh, crafted together, like edited together. And I really enjoyed it. It told me a lot about things that were uh, uncovered. With that, I hate to leave you on such a sour note so i'm going to add in this clip here where you can meet pixel and i will see you in the next show bye for now here she is here it's pixel and chad hi so oh she's just adorable isn't she i look love up, look, up color. Here, pixel. look up here <gasps> look pixel pixel she's gonna change color a lot uh, as she grows up, because uh, all of the other adult dogs that are in her family, are <laughs> they're beige coloured. And I think she might keep a little bit of her caramel about her. I love her paws. She's a cutie. Yeah, she's going to get to around 32 to 35 pounds. And she's going to run this household. She already is. And we, but we love her. We love her dearly. She's